Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. In this video, I want to talk to you about how to find and correct duplicate income. For my example, I'm going to pretend that I have a deposit and a sales receipt that are both identical. This will be the same logic as what you would have seen if you've watched my video on how to clean up duplicate income with an invoice and a deposit. This is just a different video showing you a different thing in case this one applies to you. So first we need to discover our duplicate. I'm going to stumble across it by opening up my profit and loss and reviewing my income. To get to my profit and loss, I'm going to click on reports on the left hand side of my screen. I'll then select reports in the pop out menu. I will select the words profit and loss. I'm going to scroll up and change my date range. My example happens to be this year. So I'm going to change my reporting period to this year. I'll select run report. The next thing I would do, and I would encourage you to do this early and often, is I'm just going to click on my total income. I want to see all the sales that happened within my QuickBooks. I'm doing this to review it for logic, but also to look for any mistakes. I discovered that I have a mistake. Not really surprised. So I discovered my mistake. Today I entered a sales receipt, but I also made a deposit. There's only one entry of $27.99 that went into my Make Believe bank account. But in QuickBooks land, I have two of them. I need to squish them together into one. Let's say that we wanted to keep the sales receipt because we, we want to keep the history. We want to know that David bought a thing and what David bought. I'm going to show you why we're keeping the sales receipt and not the deposit. Let me go back. I'm going to go to sales and then to customers. I'm going to click on David and now I'll look at his transactions. You'll notice when I look at the transaction history, the only thing that shows up is the sales receipt. The deposit, even though I put his name on the deposit, it doesn't show up in his profile. So for that and a handful of other reasons, I'm electing to keep the sales receipt. So I know I need to remove the deposit, but I don't want to just delete it because what if that deposit got reconciled? What I want to do is I want to click on my sales receipt. This will open the sales receipt transaction. I want to change my deposit too. Right now in Make Believe Land, it's getting deposited into the bank account. What I really want to do is have it deposit into undeposited funds. I'm going to scroll until I find it. If you don't see undeposited funds on your list, you might see an account called payments to deposit. It's the same thing for a very small window in time into it was experimenting with payments to deposit. I think they've gone back to undeposited funds now. So I will select it and then I will select save and close in the lower right hand corner. It doesn't change anything on my profit and loss, but now, now I can make that change. I'm going to go ahead and select the deposit. I will do that by clicking on the word deposit, although I could click anywhere on that horizontal line. Now when I'm looking at my bank deposit, I see the money went in the bank account. I see what day the money went in the bank account and I can say, oh, this is David's money and I can put a little check mark next to his name. This entry up here is the sales receipt that I just edited. Down below where it's the additional money showing up in the sales income account, I can just delete this line. I've already determined that I want to keep the sales receipt and I want to delete the other thing. So I'll click on the little trash can to the right. By doing this, the total deposit remains the same as it was before I touched it. I'm going to select save and close. The only thing that's left for me to do is just to verify when I look at my profit and loss and I look at my income, how many entries do I have for my client? In this case, I have only one entry, which means that I did it correctly. I had two because I made a mistake and double entered it. I squished it together into one and now I can celebrate by eating cookies. I hope this video has been helpful. 
If you have any topics you'd like to see me cover, please don't hesitate to let me know. You can leave a comment down below or you can send me a message, rachel at gentlefrog.com. Thanks and have a great day.